Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. It's time to jump into today's news that's going around in the tech space. But before we do, I wanted to inform you that today's Hot News episode, just like yesterday, is brought to you by BetterHelp.com. If you want some affordable help from licensed therapists online, this isn't just like some weird counseling thing. These are licensed therapists that BetterHelp provides you that you can get at your convenience through texting, calling, video chat, phone chat, however you want, at your convenience, at your leisure. It's a simple and affordable professional counseling session that you you can get through them. You'll get automatically paired with a counselor within 24 hours. And if they're not your style or there's other reasons why you can't make it work with them, there's no harm, no foul. You can change to any other counselor that you want to make sure that your needs are getting met through your counseling that you might need. So if you're over 18, you can head on to betterhelp.com forward slash UFD links in the video description where you can get help for 35 to $65 per week. And if that's too rich for your blood, there are some sponsorships available that you can apply for. Side note that this is not a crisis line. These are professional trained licensed therapists, but they are not meant to deal with crisis situations. So if you need some crisis help, find somebody in your area that can help you out with that. But in case you're interested in this service, which I personally am, I use it because it makes sure that I can get counseling when I'm like done working on the YouTube channel and I'm done working my real job. I don't have a whole lot of time to like actually take off of those things and I could just do it at night and it makes it so that I can be in my PJs, but still, you know, develop my mental health. So if you're interested, check out betterhelp.com forward slash UFD. Now it's time to move on to the hot news. Let's start today off with some bad news. MoviePass, which is a service that allows you to go to the movie theater as much as you want for roughly $10 a month. Well, they actually changed it so you can only go three times a month and then that there's a whole big thing and there's like might, maybe a class action lawsuit that's going against them because they're changing their service and they like re-signed up people for their service after they had canceled. MoviePass is just not in a great state, which I mean, this article basically confirms it. The company posted a quarterly loss of 126 million dollars. That's up from the three million dollar loss that they suffered just a year previous. MoviePass probably not going to be around for much longer. It's a great idea. I love the fact that there's like a subscription service for going to the movies, but it apparently isn't really working out. The cost to actually maintain the service is way too high. Personally, I would prefer like if I could pay $15, $20 to rent a movie at home at the same day it launches, that would be nice for me because I don't want to go to the movies with my crying little baby that we have. It, he makes it so that we we don't want to we don't want to be rude to anybody else. So we want to experience actually getting movie theater movies movies, but we want to do it in the privacy of our home. Movie Pass, that might be a better way for you to go. Just say More bad news, Amazon Alexa can be hacked to spy on you. Hackers at DEF CON have remotely messed with Amazon Alexa's and they turned it on so that like it listens to you and then it reports it to other unknown entities and it doesn't have to actually activate and of, like this this is of course going to be happening like basically you're putting a wiretap in your house and you're expecting like it to not be wiretapped. Really strange. I'm not sure I understand the whole like smart home device thing that's going on right now. But besides that, but Amazon is quick on the uptake. It appears that they have already released a patch for this, even though it was just recently developed or announced or discovered at DEF CON 26. So Amazon's trying to make sure that your Alexas aren't gonna be miscommunicating or mishandling the private sensitive information that they might be hearing, such as your uh, the fact that Reese doesn't wanna ever do the hot news jingle. Yeah, I hear you talking at your house, okay? Your Alexa's spying on you, boy. Fantastic. Internet of Things is gonna crash everything. Reese is saying that at DEF CON he heard of reports where people are hacking pacemakers to kill people and hacking air cons to bring down the power grid because why not? Yes, because all hackers are bad. But you know who actually is bad? It appears it's Google because an Associated Press investigation has found out that Google, even though you might turn off that you don't want your location data re being reported to them, they still record your location data. They still record the services that you actively turn off within the Google and Android environment, which is no bueno. Like, but at the same time, it's something that like, we all kind of signed up for. Some of you have responded, well, if you're not doing anything wrong, why, why does it matter if your privacy is being violated? I don't care. I'm, I'm on the side of like, we, we, we are the, the products. People are taking advantage of our personal information. They're selling it. And when that happens without our consent or our informed consent, that's a bad thing. I don't have anything to worry about when people track my location of going to Rocco Mama's 16 times a day, but that's my personal data. I need to know I'm getting fat. Google doesn't need to know I'm getting fat. They need to stay out of my life, especially when I tell them to. So Google, stop this crap. 
Now, in something that I think personally is a good thing, a Square's Cash app has now started to support Bitcoin in all 50 US states, whereas previously there were some states that it didn't get in on. And I think that this is really what Bitcoin needs to become mainstream, not the fact that it's worth $20,000, but because, but rather the fact that like big payment applications such as Square will use it in a way that allows you to buy and sell and trade freely with Bitcoin because that's what general mass adoption needs is the convenience aspect, not the giant profit aspect. Because when it's giant profit, it's robots who are trading who are winning on that, not regular humans like you and me. So thankful that Square is updating the Cash App to be available everywhere because this is a good thing. And for those of you who ask where our like crypto news is, there you go. It's not enough, I know, but still, here you go. And a quick little bit of Apple news, it appears that they are hiring somebody to help develop their own biometric chips. Cool stuff. I, I guess they need somebody smart to help tell them how to check a heart rate. That sounds really sarcastic. I know it's super complicated, but I'm just like, Apple's hiring people. But in actually interesting health examination news, there are 3D x-rays that look terrifying. The picture that's been floating around the internet is from Mars Bioimaging, and it shows a man's wrist and watch being x-rayed. It looks nasty. It looks like what you would expect a 3D x-ray to look like, and fantastic, good stuff. I'm glad that this is a new technology and that we get to see our innards more clearly. But in even weirder news, there's like a haptic feedback system that's being developed by Fundamental VR that allows surgeons to feel haptic feedback, and they're saying it's basically roughly realistic enough for them to perform remote surgery using VR goggles and this haptic feedback sensation, which like partially like I'm okay with like it, like I guess it's fine for a remote doctor to work on me, but at the same time, it terrifies the heck out of me that somebody in another part of the world could actually be operating on my spine because he's the best spinal doctor and I don't have anybody in backwoods America where I live. I live in South Africa, not backwoods America. It's I didn't want to call South Africa backwards. I don't know if I'm personally okay with this. I get the idea, really cool technology, but I don't know if I want remote doc working on me. What do you guys think? I'm leaving a poll up there. I want to hear, are you guys down with remote surgery thanks to haptic feedback and VR? Or no, don't ever touch me with such things. And in more future technology that's now here, Samsung has released the world's first 5G multi-modem modem for 5G phones. So basically multi-modem means that it supports 4G all the way down to 2G and has like multi-support, but then it's also gonna be 5G and it's the Exynos modem 5100 that they've released. But then Sprint and LG have confirmed that they might be releasing a 5G smartphone within the first half 2019 with the Snapdragon 845. And then Verizon says that their 5G home internet launch will come with either free YouTube TV or Apple TV 4K, which like, I don't trust Verizon in this whatsoever. Like they might be bringing like 5G internet service, sure, but expecting them to provide an add-on service that is a value add to your home service. They're gonna do a really with that. They're gonna figure out a way to charge you for it. I don't like Verizon. They can, they can, they can eat this. They can eat this. I don't care that you're offering me YouTube TV. Go away. There's a report out from Pharonix on the fact that the Threadripper is apparently being super hampered by Windows because of the kernel that's developed there. So they did a bunch of tests with the Threadripper 2990WX on professional applications with like a Vega 64 or some sort of Vega card in there just on the CPU tests. And it appears that because of how Windows handles NUMA, which is the non-unified memory access and the way that, uh, you know, the Infinity Fabric works on Threadripper, that the, the performance gains you can see by switching to Linux versions of your professional application is in the neighborhood of roughly 20 to 25% in many different applications. They have a whole list on their website that they went through. So you can check the link in the video description uh, for the actual source on that to see just how much better Threadripper does when it's not constrained by Windows. And this is like, I'm not a Linux user, but I will give this Linux users, this is your time to gloat and to feel happy and to feel proud and to talk in the comments about how Linux master race is the way to go. There you go. You're welcome. The Threadripper 2990WX doesn't exist in a vacuum though, because we know as with Computex that Intel is planning on releasing a 28 core high-end desktop chip with Cascade Lake. And it appears that they'll be launching a brand new chipset called the X599, which coincidentally 599 is how many power phases you need to actually power that freaking chip because haha -ha joke, he needs the actual chiller to run. Hopefully they have that figured out in the future. The X599 chipset will apparently support six channel memory and including the 22 
22 to or the 24 to 28 cores that they might be releasing on Cascade Lake. A lot of this isn't clear in a lot of its rumors. And then there's the idea that on the X299 chipset that Intel will update the high-end desktop chips to be 20 to 22 cores, because currently the highest end 7980XE is only 18 cores. A lot of that has to be remain to be seen, but X599 is apparently coming and it's gonna basically draw as much power as 16 normal suburban American houses. Okay, now let's talk about the new Intel vulnerabilities that have been revealed. They are called Foreshadow and the L1 Terminal Fault. These are actually different from Spectre and Meltdown, which have been previously reported on. They're not a new variant of Spectre or Meltdown. They are different altogether because they're different methods of attack on CPUs, leaving them vulnerable to hackers. However, they use the same type of method, which is speculative execution attacks, which means that your processor any day of the week is guessing what it's going to do. It's making educated guesses. And in those educated guesses is where a lot of the vulnerabilities lie through Spectre Meltdown and these new uh, attacks that are happening. The reason that with speculative execution is such a big thing is because Intel has used it for performance gains in order to make sure that their CPUs aren't bogged down. With a well, well degree of accuracy, guess what it's going to do next? That means that it can perform actions faster. So Intel has been getting faster. AMD also does this and things have been getting faster there. It appears that these flaws have been affecting more Intel than anything though. And Intel has announced that they are actually working on an update to potentially pull out the L1 terminal faults patch, uh, the vulnerability that's there. But the big thing here is that with Spectre and Meltdown, there were performance hits because the patch had to deal with how it handles speculative execution, which makes the CPU faster, thereby those patches made it slower. We'll have to see if there's going to be a performance hit with these new patches that are coming for the L1 terminal fault and the foreshadow uh, vulnerabilities that exist on these chips. However, it should be noted that the only CPUs that appear to be, have at least been announced to be affected by this right now are Skylake and up. So Skylake, KB Lake, and Coffee Lake. Uh, potentially the Coffee Lake refresh. We don't know anything about that just yet. That's speculation at this point. However, uh, Skylake and on up are vulnerable to these new faults. You should probably patch them if you are dealing in any sort of sensitive environment where getting your CPUs hijacked is a very bad thing. So uh, be on the lookout for Intel's microcode updates that will fix this. And then we can also report in the future if there are performance hits to Intel chips because of these patches, we'll have to see. Does this affect you at all? Have you been significantly Significantly affected by the Spectre and Meltdown attacks that have happened. Let me know down in the comments. Uh, personally, like it hasn't affected me whatsoever. Now it's time for our daily dose of NVIDIA graphics card rumors, which they are obviously going to be coming hot and heavy considering that we were expecting the RTX 2080 to be announced on Monday at Gamescom, which has been teased by NVIDIA. You can check that out in the hot news episode that we did yesterday to get the full breakdown of that. Before we dive into today's in rumors information that we have, I just want to say that there was something that uh, somebody in the comments piqued my uh, memory on because I forgot to mention this, even though I wanted to in yesterday's hot news. It's just the fact that like, we have been wrong about so many things with these rumors. We have stated things that have turned out to be incorrect and it looks like the 2080 is what it's gonna be named when we thought it would be the 1180. We reported several things on that from our digging that articles and finding that it's the 11 series. Looks like the 20 series is a reality. That still could possibly, like they could be releasing a 20 and an 11 series depending on how they wanna break it down. Just like uh, Apple launching the iPhone 10 in the iPhone 8 at the same time, even though it doesn't make any sense. That could potentially happen here. Basically, the only two things that I've ever stated that we are so super confident on is the fact that it's gonna have GDDR6 and it's gonna be faster than a 1080. That's what I can bet my hat on. And that's what I'm gonna continue to bet my hat on until we have information on Monday. But it appears that we have been wrong and we are okay with being wrong and we apologize. And like, we always wanna report these rumors as if they're rumors and we have, want to have a genuine discussion about them and what they could potentially mean going forward. But again, we can't confirm any of that until we actually have these cards in our hands. With that being said, let's jump into the rumors because uh, Tech Power Up apparently has listed cards such as the RTX 2080 Ti, the RTX 2080, and the RTX 2070, and their official specs, their CUDA core amounts, their memory size, all of that kind of good information that you would expect. So they're reporting that the 2080 Ti would have 4,352 CUDA cores with about 11 gigabytes of memory, just like the 1080 Ti, but GDDR6, a 352-bit bus, and then it would have performance of about 13 teraflops. 
with clock speeds of 1350 and boost of 1500. The RTX 2080 would have 2944 CUDA cores. It would have a clock speed of 1515 megahertz and a boost clock of 1750 with eight gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. And it's based on the RT104 die. And then the uh, RTX 2070 has 2432 CUDA cores, has eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory again, and then has a GPU clock of 1500 megahertz, uh, 1700 megahertz boost, and a whole bunch of other information that's not necessarily super relevant. These are placeholder pages as far as Tech Power Up is officially reporting, which I mean, they, they definitely won't have this information as specified like this, and they're not even claiming that this is real. But in case you find it on the internet, this is what Tech Power Up's claiming. I wouldn't necessarily take these ones as gospel because it just looks like they're, they're just throwing things in there. However, there is some other information that has been leaked that I kind of personally found interesting because this is something that I've actually heard behind the scenes already. So one of my sources had reported to me that uh, we shouldn't be calling things the 11 series and that he feels sorry for Titan V owners. And I was like, what? That's weird. And this person has leaked credible information to me before, but it was so like out there that I never felt like I could report on it. And even still, it's like a super large claim and I'm not entirely sure it's accurate. However, that claim has actually been made over on the Baidu forums with somebody who claims they have firsthand access to these cards. They claim that Nvidia will be launching a 2080 Ti, a 2080 and a 2070 of the RTX variety. And the RTX 2080 will be coming in at $650 which is a $50 price cut and makes me certainly surprised. They claim that the performance is definitely higher than a 1080 Ti and basically level with a Titan V, which is crazy because the Titan V is a $3,000 card and now Nvidia is gonna be giving that out for $650. They have a whole bunch of other information there, but that's basically the biggest rumor that we're seeing here is that the Titan V owners are gonna have super regrets, just like they did with like the Titan X Pascal and the 1080 Ti and then the Titan XP launching. Nvidia still seems to kind of be doing that kind of thing where they're screwing over previous owners if this leak could be taken as credible, which again, we won't know, but $650, Titan V level performance. It's a possibility. It is a new architecture. We'll have to see if Nvidia brings that to the table. Otherwise, we're still going to continue twiddling our thumbs and reporting on this every single time that there's something new out because you all seem to be very interested in all of this. And that's going to wrap it up for all of the hot news that we have for today. Are you scared about the new Intel vulnerabilities? What do you think of the rumored RTX 2080 performance? Are you excited for 5G modems on your phone? Let me know any and all of that down in the comments down below. And again, want to remind you that this video was brought to you by betterhelp.com forward slash UFD. So if you need some affordable, convenient, professional counseling, you can use our link in the video description to get signed up for that. Anyways, I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. I want you to hit the like button. If you enjoyed this video, I want you to get subscribed if you want to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. And I want to end the video there. I love you too. See you in the next video. Your smiling faces. Bye.